ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is a unique opportunity because we have, uh, for the first time, brought together on one platform six World Cup winning captains and members of every World Cup winning team on one platform. So give them all a very big hand. Kapil Dev, you've been asked this question many times, I know. When did it really sink in that you had actually won the World Cup? Did you, did you really believe when you went to sleep that night on June 25th, 1983, that I have won the World Cup? You have defeated Clive Lloyd's West Indians. Oh, it took me 25 years to understand we won the World Cup. <laughs> it took you 25 years? Yeah, I think everybody is keep on saying, you know, they were a better team, but now, I think after 25 years, all of you, media, everybody is saying, yes, we won the World Cup. So, I would say, yeah, it took me 25 years to understand, yes, Indian team won the World Cup. And whenever you meet Clive, do you remind him about that day or not? No, I remember about picking up a few champagne bottles from his room, that's it, I remember about that. <laughs> because they had, they had around about 40, 50 bottles of champagne. I mean, any captain, anybody could order once uh, a team is out for 183. So when we won, the tradition at that time is you go to the losing team's dressing room, and I saw there's a lot of uh, a champagne bottle was there, and I said, they're not going to drink. <laughs> Perhaps we so, can, we so can you're, use it. So you're telling us today that the Coca-Cola bottles were in the Indian team because you didn't think you were going to win, and the champagne bottles were in the West Indies team because they thought they were going to win, right? Yeah, I think that was uh, the real thing was that. And we picked up and we didn't say thank you. We said thank you after 20 years. Thanks, Clive. <laughs> you know. Did someone shed uh, tears in the dressing room, in the West Indies dressing room? Sorry. 25th June. Did, did anyone in the West Indies dressing room cry when you lost? No, they were very sullen faces, no doubt about that, because it's, the guys probably thought that, you know, they should have won that. And we had some young players, uh, two or three of them, who had never played in a World Cup fi final or, or ever, you know. So it's obvious that um, it was sad for them. But we had won two before, so the point is getting there was important. We were runners-up, and, and it's quite obvious that we, we were unhappy about the situation. But we had given the mantle to somebody else, and they and a team that played much better than we did. You know, uh, Alan Border, the Australians are, of course, the great beer drinkers. I don't think you all are champagne drinkers, you are the great beer drinkers. And you won in Kolkata, in front of what was the largest crowd ever, I think, in a World Cup final. More than 100,000 people. I presume you must have cleaned out crates of beer. What was it like for you? Because you were leading a very young, raw team, much like Kapil Dev in 1983. Yes, it was a, a bit surreal, uh, to be honest, uh, playing in front of that size crowd, uh, an unfancied side, but we'd got you know, through the tournament very well. Um, uh, we were a very well prepared side, uh, very good in the field, and we had, uh, the first time in my memory, we actually went into games with uh, some sort of game plan, you know, specific targets when we batted and uh, guys to bowl at certain stages uh, throughout the inning. So, uh, we had a lot more structure to the way we played our cricket. So, you know, we gave ourselves a bit of a chance going to the game, but um, I, I do have very fond memories of uh, turning up at Eden Gardens, um, and I don't know whether it was because uh, we were the underdogs or we were playing England, but uh, the whole crowd basically were going for us. So um, it was just like playing in front of a home crowd at the MCG. So it was a tremendous atmosphere um, and just uh, the most fantastic feeling at the end. And how many crates of beer did you finish? Uh, there was quite a bit of um, beers drunk last night. Most of it gets spilt, you know, <laughs> sprayed around the dressing room uh, in celebration. So um, we wasted probably more than we drank. <laughs> Amir Sohel, there's a story which is said that apparently Imran decided uh, that you were going to win this World Cup at a time when, in that 92 World Cup, you were virtually out. You had to win every game to stay in the World Cup. And there were some reports that tickets had been booked for you to go back to Pakistan. And when Imran suddenly told you that you had to start winning every match. Tell us what it was like to play under Imran. Were you frightened of Imran? Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much. It's an honor uh, to be sitting along with these uh, great players and uh, representing Imran Khan. Uh, yes, it's true. Uh, when we started uh, our campaign uh, for 92 World Cup, 
uh, we had a setback. Javed Miyadad couldn't travel with the team. Then we landed in uh, Australia. Wakar Yunus got injured. But uh, what Imran did great in that particular uh, World Cup was he kept on giving confidence to individuals to start with. He was not talking to the team. He was giving confidence to the individuals, especially who was, he was banking on. He gave a lot of confidence to uh, individuals. Yes, we lost uh, two, three games initially in the World Cup, but when he uh, kind of recovered from his shoulder injury, and when he decided to captain the team again, uh, he started to dish up the roles and he started talking collectively to the team. Okay, we can win the World Cup. And that was the great thing about Imran Khan at that time. First, he dealt with the individuals, then the team collectively. You know, Arjuna Ranatunga, in many ways, people would say you are a very different captain to most of these here. You know, you're, you're relatively calmer than the people on your left-hand side, certainly. Uh, 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 the two of you, yes. Uh, but, you know, it was incredible what you achieved in 1996. Much like what Kapil Dev achieved for India in 1983, it was a breakthrough moment for Sri Lankan cricket. Do you believe that moment changed Sri Lankan cricket forever? I think so. I, I personally feel that uh, the, the cricket went into a different, uh, different route. Uh, each and every kid wants to play cricket, each and every kid wants to play for the country. But um, if you analyze the entire World Cups, I was playing under 12 when Clive Lloyd won the World Cup in 75. And, uh, when Kapil won in 83, I was part of the Sri Lankan team in the World Cup and I was wondering, apart from Sunil and Kapil, there were no so-called great cricketers in that side. How can they win? And that's inspired me to think that we, we, are, we are a nation whom we can win a World Cup. Then it happened in 92 when Imran and uh, uh, the team won the World Cup from nowhere, they were a very young side, but the way Imran captain it inspired me, if India, Pakistan can win, why can't Sri Lanka win? And those are the things happened to me in my life. And uh, when you analyze all the teams, Alan Borders team was a very young side. I, I give a lot of respect for all the captains and all the teams, but for me, uh, Imran's team and Kapil's team are the best two teams. Question for both uh, Ricky and Steve. You know, that period, 1999 to 2007, you won everything. Test match cricket, one day cricket, World Cups. What was the mantra in them? What was the sort of slogan inside the Australian dressing room? What was it like? We had the attitude that um, we never became complacent. We always saw ourselves, even if we were ranked number one, I think we imagined ourselves as being number two, always trying to chase someone down. Um, every day we tried to improve, we tried to raise the bar high, so once we played a really good game we knew that that was the standard we were capable of, so we didn't want to drop below that. So it was always, always about aspiring to play better. There's a lot of competition to be in the side. Um, you knew that if your form dropped off or you became complacent, someone would take your spot and that may be the end of your career. So you were always um, you know, wanting to perform. It was a pride in your performance. Uh, it was pretty simple. Uh, we knew we were part of a a fantastic era of Australian cricket, and we wanted to capitalise on that. Yeah, look, I think if you asked Stephen the same question, it'd be one thing that I'm probably most proud of out of my whole playing career is the fact that we were, we were able to sustain success over very long periods of time. And when you consider, you know, winning 16 consecutive test matches, it's winning, winning three or four in a row is a hard thing to do, let alone win 16. And it happened twice through that, you know, through two two very good cricket teams, if you like. But the thing that stood out most about, and Stephen just touched on it then, the thing that stood out most for me anyway, coming into a fairly established team in the, in the, when I came into the side, was just how much the individual senior players tried to make themselves better on a daily basis. And, um, you know, seeing Steve Waugh go to the, the nets and stay in the nets for two hours until he was happy and come out, watching Glenn McGrath bowl in the nets until he was happy with the way his run up felt and his rhythm felt you know I can't say the same thing about Warney because he didn't do that much in the nets he didn't have to but the individual players and the will for the individual players just to make themselves that little bit better meant that if the individuals did that then you know the team performance was always going to improve so you know no matter what some of these uh, you know, more senior players in the Australian cricket team had ever achieved though on a daily basis were trying to find a way to make themselves better. You know, we haven't spoken about one, from an Indian perspective, one great, Sachin Tendulkar. 
you know, achieved his ambition to win a World Cup finally in 2011. Uh, had played a World Cup, first World Cup in 1992. So it took him 22, 20 years almost to achieve a remission. Do you believe Alan Border, a great cricketer today, is not complete until he has won a World Cup? Is it important to win that World Cup before you can claim truly to be a great? Uh, not necessarily. Um, but it is a great feather in the cap, isn't it, to uh, actually be part of a, a winning World Cup side. There's no doubt about that. It's just, I suppose, um, players who don't achieve that, and there's many, uh, a lot of Englishmen, <laughs> Um, they, they'd feel that uh, that's something that on their CV that's missing. You know, there, there's just something missing in, in the overall, you know, you look at the, all your stats and things like that. But uh, if you've won a World Cup, it is a special thing. There's no doubt about that. My question is this, that uh, last wicket bat batsman batting uh, and he needs to score four to five runs and there is MS Dhoni. So uh, more pressure will be on batting side or a bowling side? Obviously, uh, pressure is going to be on both. You know, he has to get four runs, he's uh, captain of India, uh, you know, expectation level is so high and bowler is going to be obviously under pressure. But Dhoni never looks under pressure, you believe that's deceptive? Well, uh, that's, uh, that's the quality of that player, you know, he has this calm exterior, whether he's breaking inside, he doesn't give it away, so th that's why he's been so successful. Who is going to win the 2015 World Cup and what is that, who is that one player you believe who will have that decisive impact? Well, it's very difficult to, to say who would win the World Cup. There's no doubt about that. Who's your favourite? But, but I think then a couple of teams really that are good enough. I think Australia's got a pretty good team. India's got a, a, a pretty good team. They, they're, they're, they're winning. They're consistent. And it's a team that is consistent. And they're playing in two different countries. Um, and I don't think they're, they're sort of not similar conditions. Um, so, I think it's those who climatize uh, themselves rather quickly and who can get that consistency and that winning attitude. Do you believe that the Australians are the favourites or being in home conditions is actually pressure? And who is your favourite? It's, it's extra pressure, no doubt about that, playing in front of your own crowd. It can work both ways, that too, can't it? You know the conditions well. I, I like Australia for this World Cup. Um, they, they'll know the conditions. If all the players are fit and available, uh, they'll be a very hard side to beat and they'll beat South Africa in the final. Amir Sohel, who is your pick for the 2015 World Cup? Well, we spoke about it earlier and, uh, you know, when you're analysing teams, uh, how they're going to go in a particular tournament, you have to see how many impact players there are, uh, how many options in batting and bowling captain has. If you look around, then Australia is number one. They have uh, pr uh, most of their baller, uh, batsmen, they could ball and they could assist the captain. And uh, if you talk about their frontline ballers, they could actually contribute with the bat. So I think Australia is number one. Number two is South Africa. Number three, Sri Lanka, India. And you can even, if, if, West Indies decides to play in the World Cup, <laughs> they, 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 they might be there.